Welcome to part three of this short series of videos about um, installing the Oracle database in a Docker image using Jupyter Notebooks, Python, and Docker. Um, so in this particular episode, um, what we'll be doing is discussing the creation of the base image we'll use for future exercises. So the expectation is that you will have followed um, and configured Jupyter. Um, we did this in the previous video and then gone through to the GitHub repository and downloaded the series of notebooks I've actually created, which guide you through these particular steps. Now, um, another really important part is we're also going to need to go and grab the Oracle database software. And we can grab that from the Oracle website. Um, we need to download the Linux x86-64 zip file and that should be downloaded into a directory of your choice. Having done all of those things, uh, the next step will be to um, uh, bind the couple of directories, the directory that we actually downloaded the Oracle database software into in its zip form. It's important that you don't unzip it. And a directory, which isn't so important in this particular exercise, but it's useful just for reference to move forward, um, a directory to contain the persisted database files um, for exercises moving forwards. So once we've actually got those things done, we're going to go through and use an lightweight Oracle Linux image to build the base image that will take everything else from. Once we've actually got that base image built, we'll then go through and create a container. Um, and inside of that container, we'll go through and install the Oracle database software. Once we've actually got the software installed, um, we will then look, go through and build a image on that container. And that image will form the basis of all exercises moving forward. It will effectively give us um, something that we can use for creating lot containers um, in the next series of exercises. So having said all of that, let's get started and take a look at installing the software. So now that you've downloaded the Jupyter Lab and you um, have it successfully installed on your Mac or Linux or Windows machine. Um, the next step is to um, download the uh, Git repository that I've actually created for these particular exercises. And this um, repository um, contains all of the instructions you can see in front of you for installing on a Mac um, or on a Linux. Now, clearly, before you can actually even get to that stage, you need to be able to download the software. So if you go to my GitHub repository, domgiles slash Jupyter lab work, you'll see um, all of these files. In the instructions installation, I showed you how to actually um, clone this repository and download it. Alternatively, you can go straight to this stage yourself now and just download this into a local directory and open it up inside of um, Jupyter Lab. Now, the other thing that you will need to um, download at this point in time is to download the Oracle software. And you'll need to download the zip version of the Linux x86-64 variant. It's about 4.3 gigabytes in size, so it's gonna take a little while to download. So you wanna kick that off before you do um, anything else. Now, after you've downloaded the lab, um, downloaded the software, sorry, you should end up with a file called Linux uh, x 864 1800 inside of your um, directory. Now you'll need to remember where this is actually held in my particular instance. It's inside of my Oracle 18 software directory. Do not unzip this file. Um, you'll use it unzipped as we go through the various um, process. Now inside of Jupyter Lab, when you've cloned that directory, you'll see a number of files. The one that we're interested in is the Oracle Docker image um, notebook. And um, as I mentioned earlier, the notebook enables us to step through and configure the um, uh, base image that we're going to use for exercises um, going forwards. Um, I've um, got all of this documented. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. Um, but what we are going to do is to go through and step through and execute each one of these code cells. Now you can either do this um, by going through and um, clicking on the arrow at the top of the screen here, um, or you can go through and use uh, uh, command shift on Mac or control enter on uh, Windows. But hitting uh, play at this particular stage will execute the given cell. 
And that's um, a relatively easy way to go through and step through in a serial fashion all the various steps, reading through, making sure that you understand what's going at that point in time. Alternatively, if you're entirely comfortable with everything that we've got inside this notebook, you can just go to run and hit run all cells and it will go through and execute every single last one of the various cells that we're stepping through at this particular time in order. So if you've set up this configuration and um, you're just building a new image with a couple of changes and you just want to execute it, go ahead and just execute all of the cells. So in terms of executing each one of these cells in turn, the first cell code cell that we're going to come to just simply imports some libraries um, that we'll be using. The most important of these clearly is the Docker API. And this enables us to interact with the Docker environment via Python calls. The rest of the imports are simply there to actually render the data that's returned to us in a more usable fashion. And one of the things to point out is that I do have another notebook that contains some utility functions like listing the various images and the containers, how to actually copy files from the host environment to the um, container. So if you're interested in seeing that, and it's useful background reading, um, go through to the notebook um, that's also inside of this directory um, for the Oracle Docker database functions, and you can see what I'm actually using at that point in time. The next important step is to actually get a handle from the Docker environment that we're going to use. Now, when you're actually going through this exercise, there's pretty much only two things that you need to change, um, and that is the location of the Oracle home where we're going to persist, sorry, the location of the Oracle data files where we're going to persist data and the um, directory where we've downloaded the Oracle software to. These two directories need to reflect your own environment. Um, make sure you change them before you begin this installation process. So as I said, um, we, um, I showed you the Oracle 18 date directory earlier on. That's the one that we're actually going to be using. Um, it contains the zip file unzipped at this point in time. All of the other parameters that exist inside of this code cell, you can choose to change if you see fit. Um, if you want to change the name of the database to whatever you feel more comfortable with, then sure, go ahead and make that change in this um, given location. But it really is um, only important to actually change uh, these two parameters here. So um, having said all of that, um, the next step is that we actually go through and execute the next cell. Um, and um, the first, the next code directory come across simply checks to see that the directories exist. Um, and if they don't exist, it will go through and create them for us. And then it will actually look to check and see whether we have a file that starts with Linux uh, x64. That's the name of the file that we're expecting to see inside of that directory. And if you have none of those conditions met, we're actually going to print out a couple of warnings um, to standard out. So. Um, this is the first things that we actually do and hopefully all of those directories actually exist as you go through the next process. Um, uh, after we've actually checked those directories exist, um, the next most important step is to create a Docker file. And the Docker file, if you're not familiar with how Docker operates, is a definition of what components will exist inside of this Docker image. Now here we'll set the Oracle environment variables, we'll specify the actual source image that we're creating on top of, and this is Oracle Linux, a cut down version of Oracle Linux. Um, and then we'll also go through and install some uh, additional software that is important for the installation of the Oracle software stack and create users that we'll use inside of this environment too. So in this particular instance, we want you want to go through and make sure that we've run the um, pre-installation script from Oracle. Um, we can do that via a yum installation process and it will go through and make sure all of the required um, RPMs are installed on this image um, for us. Um, and we also at this stage um, it, uh, tell uh, the image what ports we're actually going to expose to the host environment. Once we've happy with that environment, we're actually now then going to go through and um, uh, write this Docker out. Now, one thing to be careful of, this will happen pretty quick, um, but it will depend on what software you've already got, images you've already got installed, and the speed of your networks. If you've already downloaded um, image files that have some of the dependencies I've already got um, and effectively cache them, it will be much faster. If you've got fast network, it'll be much quicker as well. So we've created the Docker image file. Um, the next thing we actually need to do is to build this image. And as I mentioned earlier on, this will take um, 
uh, probably about uh, four or five minutes to do if you don't have any of the pre-existing Docker images installed. Um, and it will actually run. Now, once this has um, finished, we'll be left with an image that we can look up inside of the Docker utilities, um, but we can't really do anything very much unless we go through and begin the process of creating a container to use this specific image. So that's our next task. We're actually going to go through and create a container. It shouldn't take uh, very long for this image to build. Here we see it's um, completed, it's said about three or four minutes, and it'll list all of the various operations that it's actually performed to go through and build that image um, for us. Now we have um, this image with all of the required files installed. You can see there's quite a lot of them. Um, we now need to go through and create a container to use that um, image. And it's at this stage that we specify um, the name of the container that we're actually going to use, um, the various amount of memory it's actually going to use, the ports and how they'll actually map from the host to the actual container themselves, and any directories. Now we've um, mentioned earlier on we've got a couple that we're actually um, binding to. One is the location for where we're going to persist data files in the next step, and the other is the location of the software download that we um, uh, uh, started earlier on in this particular exercise. Once we're happy with that, we can uh, go through and execute that. That should be near instantaneous. Um, so we now have a container based on the image we're looking to use. Inside of that container, there's some directories we need to create, um, and uh, we need to make sure that the user is created and has it belongs to the right group. So we can do all of those steps. And then the next step is to go through and unzip that software that we downloaded, the Oracle database software. And we're gonna unzip this inside of the container and not inside of um, the host. And again, this will start running. Um, I don't stream the output from this unzip operation. It's a lot of data that comes back. Um, so it's probably best just to um, list the contents of the directories when it's finished. And in this particular instance, I'm showing you the contents of the Oracle home directory. And so you should see a list of files that now exist inside of that directory. Um, when we execute, it'll be a classical sort of Oracle um, home. And again, uh, depending on how fast the machine is, this should take uh, about three or four minutes to complete. And here we can see the contents of the Oracle home directory after it's actually completed. So the next step is to generate a response file. And we're going to use this response file with the Oracle installer to tell it the names of um, the where the location is, the Oracle home, the location of the Oracle base directory, and so on. It's a very simple um, response file. It doesn't need to be very complicated. Um, we, once we've actually, def we're using the parameters that we specified earlier on in the installation. And once we are happy with those particular parameters, we can just copy it to the container and now execute, run the um, Oracle installer with that given response file. <clears throat> and again, this should take probably about three or four minutes to go through and execute. And I'll spool the output to the screen so we can see what's actually going on at that point in time. So it will go through and perform a number of validation checks and all of the normal things that it will actually do. Now we've asked them to ignore some of the validations because we are running inside of the Docker. There is nothing to worry about at this moment in time. That's the warnings are um, completely expected based on the environment that we're executing in and the resources that we have available to us. Once the installation of the software has um, completed, it asks us to run a couple of uh, root scripts to set the parameters for all the various files. Again, this um, we can do this um, trivially um, from this um, particular command here. Now, um, having gone through and um, built our various image and installed all of the software, in this particular instance, run the various root scripts to set the permissions for all of the files, we have a very useful um, base image of the Oracle uh, environment that we can use for other containers. But before we can actually do that, um, we need to go through and turn this container into a base image so it can be used uh, later on in our exercise. To do that, we, can, we use the docker um, commit command which will um, take a, a, the name of the repository in this case, which is going to be a local um, repository. 
name and the tag and we're tagging it with the ver version of the Oracle database that we specified at the start of the exercise. Now this commit operation, um, it's having to take everything, all of the changes we've actually made, turn it into a base image. This can actually take um, a while to execute depending on whether you're executing it locally or pushing it up to a remote repository. Um, it should take roughly about three to four minutes as all of the other steps have done in this particular exercise. Um, but when we finish, we'll end up with a image that we can go through and use to build other databases out. So a good example of this is if we want to create a primary and a standby database, we can use the single image. Uh, or if we wanted to create a sharded database and create a number of shards, we could again use this um, base image because the Oracle software is installed inside of that environment. And that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Now, before we finish, there's a couple of things we can actually do. Um, clearly, we've got a running container um, in this environment. We don't need to keep it running. We're going to go through and create a brand new one in the next step. So we can go through and stop and remove that particular container. And we can also go through and make sure that once we've actually stopped and removed that container, um, we can call a function called list containers that will actually just show us if we've got any running um, containers, which we don't. And finally, we can go through and list the um, images that we've created. In this instance, we can see we've got this DB18 um, image and it's about 10 gigabytes in size. And that contains all of the software that we actually need to move on to the next steps in it next um, exercise in the video where we'll be creating a database um, based on this um, given image. So that's pretty much all that we've actually got to do at this uh, moment in time. So if you follow me in the next video, we'll be talking about um, what the rerunning of the next notebook, which will create the database and potentially a standby database for us. Um, so uh, thanks very much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.